Дорогие друзья, мы все в сборе. У нас... Dear friends, we are here. We have a very interesting, very vivid, very topical discussion. We decided to talk about what kind of chief architects Russian cities need. And we have a brilliant pool of speakers. Ilsur Metchen, Kazan Mayor, Maxim Yegorov, Deputy Minister for Construction, Utilities and Communal Services, Tatiana Prokofieva. Uh, for more than 10 years, she was a chief architect for Kazan. Andrei Yerenkov, chief architect of the, architect of the Voronezh um, region. Alexander Osberg. Uh, the former chief urban designer for the Bloomberg administration and Artem Gerasimenko, project director, Architects RF Strelka Institute. We do not have a lot of time. Uh, you will have three or four minutes for every statement. Then we'll try to have some time for questions and answers. But I think we have here people who understand uh, this topic very well. They know the challenges. They know each other very well. They understand the problems of each other. That's why my proposal is that Elsur uh, starts as a speaker. He is a mayor of Kazan for the past 14 years. Uh, the city of Kazan has changed, but the country also has changed significantly. Urbanism, architecture, such words, uh, they are new, and now they are very trivial for uh, the vocabulary of the mayor of any city. What's your view? What should a mayor do to manage the city? Uh, what do you need to do in order to make sure that your policy is implemented? What kind of people you need? Uh, thank you very much, dear colleagues, dear participants. Yes, such challenges are now uh, of uh, very greatest importance. Uh, ten years ago, I actually worked uh, for Nizhnykamsk before. It's also a large city in Tatarstan. And the question of public spaces, urbanism, they didn't sound there at all. Any construction, any building crane that was already good. We were happy if something new was being built. And uh, architecture, uh, design, it was just the uh, secondary thing. We were just happy if something at least was being built. And now we have a forum where we discuss urban spaces, urban development, future of the city. And uh, we know that two-thirds of the people are going to live in the cities in the closest future. And of course, uh, the chief architect will define uh, the public space in the city very much. I'm a mayor. And for me, mayor is uh, the circle 360 degrees. And every degree is extremely important healthcare, culture, food for children, public transport, everything is extremely important. But if there are some problems, some mistakes, one year after or later, if the chief architect has signed something, it is something that will define the future of the city. Of course, a chief architect is a key figure for the team of a mayor, especially if we are talking about um, very ancient cities, cities which are older than 1,000 years old, uh, where different architects used to work, where different architectural schools used to be active. Who is going? To, who uh, is a chief architect? I would say it's a right hand. It's a main assistant for the mayor. So if uh, we can make a comparison with a clock, this will be like uh, this minute hand which shows the direction. I spoke with the administration of uh, Seoul recently and I realized that uh, for them 
the horizon of planning is 20 years, so they think about the future, distant future in 20 years. When we had a training at in Singapore, we asked a question when Lin Kuan Yu was still alive. I met him and actually asked him several times. I couldn't believe my um, what he said. I'm not native speaker. I understand English, but still, I asked. I ask this question again. What's your planning of horizon planning planning horizon? And he said. 80 years. Can you imagine 80 years? This city used to be a fishing village. So this would be a dream for us, of course. Uh, we have some projects for three years, for five years. But I think we need to change the horizon. We need to have longer horizons. Well, now we are developing the general uh, urban plan until 2025. But we continue implementing uh, all the solutions which were uh, set in the pl general plan of 1969. So we are just finishing what they wanted to be implemented, but we'd like to have plans for 50 years ahead. So that's good if you um, shorten uh, the implementation periods. Yes, I understand you. A question to Maxim Yegorov. Maxim Yegorov. Uh, this Institute of Chief Architects, how do you understand who are they? There are different federal pro uh, programs, national programs related to housing, policy, comfortable environment. Do you think that chief architects are really important for implementation of such projects? Chief architect, who is this person? Is this a person who is signing papers, providing approvals? Yes, unfortunately, this used to be like that. Of course, you support everything that's been said before. A chief architect is a key assistant for any mayor or the head of the region, because this person defines uh, how a certain space is going to look like in the future. A yeah, comfortable urban environment, maybe this sounds like lofty words, but uh, a chief architect is a figure who needs to be responsible for everything in the city. So, for example, in the Moscow region they have a separate ministry of um, urban improvement and such ministry deals with a lot of issues. And uh, they think I think that's a great idea. Now we have a big project, which is a part of the national project, uh, the index of the urban space quality. And uh, this project concerns all the spheres of life in the city. I wouldn't say that the chief architect is the institute in himself, uh, but this is a person who defines um, the life standards, who defines what are we going to feel around us when we live in a city, what are we going to feel when we come home uh, from work, lighting, all the spaces, everything, our wor a way to work and back. You talked about this um, urban improvement ministry in the Moscow region. Do you think that at a federal level you're going to have such ministry? Hmm, everything is possible theoretically. Yes, there is uh, this contradiction between the construction block and architects and there is often um, this contradiction. Who do you think chief architects are going to report to? Uh, who do, they, do you think they should report to? I think they should directly report to heads of regions or mayors or governors. And uh, probably I'll now open one secret. We are going to have a state level commission on the comfortable urban environment and we are going to cover a lot of issues related to urban environment, not the ministry as a separate uh, body, but the vice 
uh, minister is going to be the head of this new institution. I think this will be a real driver for improvement of the urban environment. Thank you very much. I'd now like uh, to address Tatiana Prokofieva. As far as I understand, I spoke with her uh, before this session. So she was uh, the chief architect in Kazan for many, many years. And uh, they had a very efficient duet between the mayor and the architect. Tatiana, my question to you. What were your main goals when you just uh, got the job? What were the goals set by the mayor? And uh, what do you think about the results? And what's your internal feeling about the success or non-success of uh, your mission? Actually, this is a very, very big question. I can uh, divide it into several questions, but yes, of course, your job was really massive. That's why my question is uh, so big. Uh, there is no university where you can get uh, official as a profession of a chief architect, and there are no books which describe uh, the responsibilities of chief architects. Every city is unique. Landscape, nature, history, and so on, cultural uh, features. And there are some uh, problems which are the same in different cities, but still, if you become a chief architect, And if you have a mission of creating the strategy for the city development, you <coughs> will have a very unique uh, set of goals. I went in years. I was appointed a chief architect when I was invited by El Sur. I actually wanted to do everything to make our city the most beautiful city in the world. Of course, we had a lot of challenges. But uh, I had to work with something which is uh, closest to my heart. And I think all the chief architects do that. So I created a strategy or a framework for myself. So I thought that I have some technical challenges. So for example, then we had a problem of uh, preparing for the university games, universiade. And, of course, there were some challenges for the longer horizon, 10, 20, 50 years ahead. And uh, there was also some day-to-day -day operations, routine work, for example, uh, as for the university games. Then Kazan. Kazan was a different city. I don't want to... Uh, blame anyone. I don't want to say um, something negative about my city. There were lots of problems with the historical center. It was in ruins. It was dilapidated. And we had some other problems. Um, we did have a lot of progress uh, with redevelopment. And we started with um, preparation for university games. It was our main challenge and our main task. We also wanted to improve the quality of, uh, of the living standard, the quality of everything. And then uh, next year, you said we were a do-it. Actually, we were not a do-it. He was uh, uh, a leading. Uh, the mayor uh, played the leading role, and um, uh, we were handed different tasks, and we had to identify resources needed to address those tasks uh, from scratch. Uh, uh, I think the legislative framework uh, should be clearly defined. Uh, that would. Uh, exclude subjectivity in decision-making process. It should uh, create a uh, transparent uh, plain level, f level playing field for developers. And uh, as we were coping with all kinds of tasks and challenges, we were 
improving the legislative regulatory framework, all the codes, the master plan that we're working on right now, that became the most important field of work. Uh, we can talk on for a long time, but I think I will stop here. Quite interesting, but what personal qualities and professional qualities of yours helped you in your work? Uh, because you 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 are mo you're a modest person. It's uh, as is uh, as uh, as customer in Tatarstan. So uh, you have a Soviet background, architectural background. The Soviet Union used to have very strong architectural school. Over 17 years, uh, you, you made a, a journey from uh, the entrance level worker to the chief engineer. It took her 17 years. When the borders were opened, uh, she uh, used this opportunity. And by way of the Baltic states, uh, she ended up in the US. And she ended up in the NDBJ company. We met when we were working on a very ambitious project. Uh, and we were dealing with Atkins and BBJ. So we encountered a person who uh, was a Kazan native, had a very strong educational, Soviet educational background, had experience working in Europe, working in the best architectural bureaus in the world. Uh, you know, they're rough diamonds, and they're uh, diamonds that have been. Uh, polished. So she's the person, she's a diamond with polished facets. And uh, we extended her term of office uh, to mutual consent. So we we have this wonderful architect. And we're very happy to have her. Uh, I wanted to ask Artyom Gerasimenko to join us now. Uh, Artyom uh, had a very interesting study dealing with the uh, chief architects of Russia. Uh, an objective uh, snapshot of the current state of affairs, and uh, after after him, we'll move on to the uh, current chief architect. So, presentation, please. Uh, thank you for a very flattering introduction, dear colleagues. I just wanted to clarify: uh, it's not the deepest and the most thorough study of all architects that ever lived in Russia, but it's a pretty broad study. And in answering the question, uh, what kind of architects do we need? Uh, my first answer is those who have finished the program, educational program, Architects of Russia. And there are several of them. I wanted to uh, side with Tatiana Georgievna. Several years ago, I was doing a small study and the cross-section of uh, skills, strategic tactical skills, uh, self-management, and other skills that, that are necessary for architect. Uh, it, it became clear that uh, there's a model of uh, world skills of the future, and it, it's the same specialized skills. For an architect to have specialized skills is the basis of his profession. So knowledge of the context, what's happening around him, communication, communicational skills, and uh, the, the situational awareness, ability to respond quickly. Uh, talking about the findings of the research following surveys of Russian architects. We looked at a number of regions, Russian regions. And uh, to put it br uh, briefly, uh, there is no direct correlation between the reporting structure, skills, etc. Uh, so in 40% of the Russian regions uh, under survey, the uh, key chief architect uh, had responsibilities and powers to affect the urban policy. The Tver, Voronezh, Ulyanovsk, Orenburg, Tumen, Kemerovo, uh, Amur regions, uh, Altai Republic. 
In 67 regions of Russia, the chief architect of the region reported directly to the head of the constituent territories of the region. As Maxim Borisovich uh, suggested, uh, direct reporting of chief architect uh, to the head of the municipal uh, to the head of the municipality so uh, we now have very interesting geometry going forward you did you misunderstood me I said that chief architect should be present in each municipal entity uh, but there also should be an institution of a chief architect in the in the region in the major region because uh, different regions uh, may represent different cultures so there should be an institution of sorts in each uh, region clear uh, in 40 percent of the regions that that's what is, is starting to happen. In 67 regions, we have direct reporting of chief architects to heads of regions. Uh, we're very respectful of the Tatarstan, and we're planning to visit you to learn about best practices. And the position of chief architect of the Republic of Tatarstan uh, the, the, the chief architect holds the position of the Ministry of Urban Development of the Republic of Tatarstan. And uh, why, why do you dislike the idea of a minister serving as chief architect? I have no problem with that. The, 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 the chief architect, he is an expert in this area. So it's, we're lucky that we don't need another person. Uh, the question is whether we need to have an institution for the development of architecture, supervision over the outward appearance of buildings, uh, monitoring, and the, the responsibility for institutional transformations and day-to-day -day management. If you look at the region, the question is where the budgets are, who is in charge of the money, who controls the money. Uh, to be, ch okay, so the chief architect and to be responsible for the building code. Of course, it's very honorable, but perhaps it's not enough. At the regional level, you can have a high status. You can uh, participate in uh, very important debates and enter very high places, but uh, you sometimes don't have the backing. Uh, I think I'm running out of time. We looked at the skills. Uh, uh, drawing on my personal experience, uh, so the question was phrased, uh, what, uh, who should be the chief architect, anthropologist, sociologist, or manager? And I was, to tell you the truth, I was really uh, flabbergasted by this labeling. I think that a chief architect in the modern cities should be a person with uh, a, a much broader, uh, more long-term planning horizon. So 80 years for Singapore, we heard today. So the uh, you know, your understanding that you can make plans for 80 years, and then you can uh, uh, reach a wider community of people. I think it's an important step. And uh, we try to uh, identify those people in our programs who have this planning horizon, who can look far ahead. An example was mentioned today. Uh, a chief architect who's not focused on his activities, on his work, 
he is not always in the position to take a long-term view. For example, the Royal uh, Institute of Architects recently said that uh, as architects, our role in climate change is quite high, so we can make a difference in climate change. Sounds great. Okay, why don't we save the world? So I think such architects who decided to make a focus on saving the world, I think that's kind of architects that we need in the Russian cities. Great. Now let's move on to the existing and current architects. Another shock. Sergei Kuznetsov, chief architect of Moscow, has been in this position for over seven years. Well, slightly less than seven years, to be more exact. Uh, a great number of projects under his belt, uh, several international awards. Moscow River Embankment Redevelopment Project, we've just talked about. What should be the area of responsibility of chief architects? What should they be responsible for? Uh, you know, we actually we delved into this uh, chief architect institution uh, because I'm working with Marhi uh, Moscow Architectural Institute. Uh, you know, we have a student uh, whose thesis is on that topic. And my observations tell me that, first of all, confirm the high role of an architect in societies and vertically integrated societies, uh, the, the top-down societies like the Soviet Union and Russia, and the architects that always stay in contact with the powers that be, not only with policymakers, but also with uh, uh, with the with the fat cats, with them, with those people who have money, uh, I think this is very pronounced in our culture. Maybe more pronounced than in other countries. And uh, contrary to many stereotypes, uh, that there is a an architecture that was uh, f foisted upon by the authorities. And the, and the architects responded to that call and they came up with this Stalinist architecture idea or that the Tsar decided the Moscow Kremlin to be built the way it is built. There's no historical backing. There's, there are no historical proofs uh, to that effect. To the contrary, architects found new language uh, which they believed could express the message of the powers to the people to the, of the authorities to the people. So the authorities uh, put on this bespoke suit created by the architects and uh, uh, they saw that the, 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 that suit fit them really well. So the fact is that there's no Stalinist architecture. It's the architecture produced, created by chief architects because architects, influential architects, uh, not always were in in high positions. They, they not always they held positions of chief architects. The same now, the same situation now, because in Tatarstan, Natalia Fishman uh, is not a chief architect, but she really has a sway over what's happening there. And as Ilsun Mershin said, we worked. I worked with him in. Kazan, as we're working on the Palace of Sports, I think that was a unique experience when the head of the project of the contractor company became a minister. And uh, so I think it's actually the most f progressive experience that we have. I just wanted to support if we were to look closely. It's a very great experience. So a person who used to work in on the on sites in the field, he became a minister. So I arrived at the conclusion, even before I was appointed chief architect, in 2012, Mr. Kuzmin left the position. Uh, there was a gap. So there were two months when there was n no chief architect, and there were heated debates who should be appointed. And uh, so people were thinking, all architects were thinking, 
of who's going to be appointed. I was thinking about it, and so people were asking me, what do you think? Maybe you can recommend somebody. And I said, you know, it's it's so difficult to be chief architect of Moscow. I don't think we'll be able to find one. I don't think anybody would be willing to do that kind of work. And all of a sudden, I was invited. And uh, there was a very uh, tough selection process. A headhunter company was involved. And there were 50 or more than 50 uh, candidates, thoroughly studied. And uh, I believe it's, it's very important uh, for the architect to realize that influence is, is something that the head of the region should, 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 should have. And uh, Sergei Semyonovich Sabanyan provided me with opportunities to pursue my initiatives. I think it's the most important thing, even if you look at the history of the park. Piotr was at the very beginning of the project. Uh, we had a blank check, uh, significant responsibilities, high risks, uh, but very broad prospects. So they trusted, they entrusted us with this project, and I think that was the responsibility of the uh, head of the region. So it is the the administrator, the head of the region, who should make this decision, and if he trusts him. You should give him this blank check, irrespective of what his position is called. But of course, uh, his position should be as high as possible. It should be directly accountable to the head of the region or the city or municipality. Uh, if uh, he needs uh, uh, somebody plying, somebody who would rubber stamp his decisions, who would be a, a, a yes-sayer, he can find that person. Uh, those who want to develop their region, those who want to add fire, like Sergei Semyonovich. Sergei Semyonovich said that he wanted Moscow to become one of the leading cities worldwide. Uh, and the, I don't know if you know that International Architecture Festival uh, uh, took stock of the results. Uh, this year, Moscow has 12 uh, finalists. Last year, it was six. So. We doubled the number of finalists this year. I think these are the indicators that shows that we're reaching the goal set by the mayor at the very beginning. I don't want to overplay my qualities or competences, but I think that a leader of the region has a very important role to play. OK, so everybody is saying that there is a need for direct contact with the head of the municipality or region. Everybody is saying that uh, there should be a vote of confidence of sorts. As Sergei has said, it was the first project, the Zaryadya Park was the first project uh, which you took upon. Uh, well, the mayor actually didn't have to put so much trust in me. I was a very young person back then. I'm 35 now, so by architectural standards, I was uh, a young man. And so he was pretty courageous to put so much trust into me. But I'm very grateful to him for that and this level of trust um, uh, which follows uh, a well-informed decision. You know, if we made a decision to hire you, we, we we're going to put all our trust into you. As Maxim Igorov said, a chief architect is a very important post position for the implementation of federal programs. Artyom, Artyom's point was that anthropologist, architect, a lawyer, not the most important thing, an architect should be aware of the city problems. And uh, here I'd like to give the floor to Andrei Hirenkov, because uh, you are a lawyer, you have a, a legal background, if I'm not mistaken, and you are chief architect uh, of the Voronezh uh, region. It's a large region, and you have a very inter had a very interesting career, which led to the position of a chief architect. Uh, can you tell us about the goals that you were 
uh, you had put ahead of you and what which uh, your uh, characteristics help you to implement such goals. Thank you for all these interesting questions. Actually, when I was listening to you, I uh, couldn't, it was difficult for me to keep silent because I had have so much to say. This is a rather uh, urgent topic for me. So the chief architect position, uh, here we have a very interesting story about it. I agree with everyone who said that the position of a job architect should be a key position for the mayor and for a governor. But frankly speaking, in the regions, the situation is uh, far from perfect. I have this position not due to my great uh, skills, but actually when we had a vacancy and Marina Rakova uh, was a chief architect for a long time and for more than six years I was privileged to work uh, as her subordinate. There was a competition to fill in this vacancy, but no one wanted to take this job. For eight years I had to be an active acting head of the department, I had to be the deputy. And then uh, the head of the region actually appointed me. Of course, that's great that he trusts me, but this is an answer to the question, what kind of people we need as chief architects? I would say that we can't give a unify, a, a single answer to this question. A lot depends on the structure of the administration, the structure of uh, the uh, regional government, and a lot is decided by the head of the region and the tasks he sets. There is a great difference between the position of a chief architect of a city and a chief architect of a region. Uh, why is there a difference? According to legislation of Russia, the majority of responsibilities which define uh, the face of uh, the region, they are low at the level of municipalities. So I am a chief architect of the region, but I do not have powers, for example, to ban something, not to uh, allow some building to be built. Uh, because the municipality makes such uh, gives such permissions and uh, approvals, uh, the only thing I can do I can control uh, the um, fulfillment of the requirements of the legislation. But uh, very often, such function is not really very effective, and uh, it's too late when I uh, can do something. It's too late to change the situation in the city. What kind of person should it be? If it's a person which uh, um, reports directly to the mayor, uh, such person should be very brave and he should have extreme authority with his colleagues. If you're talking about the chief architect of a region, I would say it's somebody uh, who can play many instruments at the same time, who can persuade people, who can ready to go into lengthy negotiations. As we were talking about national projects, you were talking about responsibility, great responsibility. For example, in my region, uh, people who are responsible for implementing of housing projects, they are not people from my department, they are people from the construction uh, department and utilities department. So we are core executives and we cannot directly influence the decisions. So I'm not responsible for millions of rubles which are used for redevelopment and we do a lot to persuade our colleagues uh, to take the correct decision. I would say that the main problem uh, with my with such position is the lack of uh, direct and efficient tools for solving certain problems because uh, we are not in Moscow and of course Moscow is a great role model for us and we always follow uh, and study the regulations uh, which are in place in Moscow 
But often we have dialogues with the prosecutor's office, with authorities, and unfortunately we can't implement everything we want. Andre, thank you very much. What kind of tools are you lacking? Tatiana and Sergey, the question to you too. So, Tatiana, which questions you la which tools you lacked, and Elsur, which tools you need? Uh, Sergey, which tools you need? I would say that I have enough tools and instruments, but all cities are different. And of course, there can't be a unified answer. In Moscow, we have a huge number of events. Uh, we have a very massive investment pressure. Uh, there are lots of initiatives. What is missing? I would like to have more comfortable deadlines. I would like to have more opportunities for dialogue and analysis, the time for architectural competitions. And, for example, we can't have a competition. Uh, there are some limits of the 44th federal law. Yes, we do have limitations. There was the session on renovation today at this forum, and I said that we have a very outdated regulations, and it's not connected with the stance of uh, authorities. It's just the legislation regulations which are there, uh, barriers are there. And as a result, we can't implement uh, some of the ideas. Besides the culture and construction, it requires good skills and many, many years uh, of experience. We try to be there, we try to implement projects of high standards, but in German, US or UK, this culture was raised with uh, decades of years, so they have great quality standards and it's easy for architects to work there. We don't need to persuade different instances. They don't need to beg counterparties for high quality. But unfortunately in Russia the situation is different. The quality of construction, the selection of construction materials and design solutions, that's still a sole point for us. And if you want to achieve such results, we need to do much more. And actually, as we talked with you last time, it would be great to have uh, wonderful projects which take into account Russian really. But we want to be the best of the best without taking into consideration Russian specifics. So if you want to propose the best project, it should be the best project without any exceptions. But uh, if we have people who can give you carte blanche, who are ready to be flexible, and very often from foreign uh, colleagues, we hear that Zariadia Park project wouldn't be possible in New York, for example, because it's a very um, ambitious, uh, very unusual project. Uh, we spoke yesterday with Pierre uh, de Meron and uh, we discussed the Badaevsky district project. And he said that such project would be much more challenging um, to be implemented in Europe because it requires a high level of public debate. And in Russia, we can do such projects. Uh, um, there are advantages, but disadvantages are there too. I can talk a lot about it, but maybe we should stop here if we don't want to go behind the schedule. We talked a lot about the vertical links with our um, supervisors, and uh, there is a good thing about it and a bad thing about it. So I have a certain experience uh, with that, but I would say that projects which I implemented are difficult to implement elsewhere. Uh, but sometimes we lack the trust in us. So 
my boss probably won't uh, trust some of my proposals. And uh, some of the projects are rather complicated. And they are rather difficult to understand for non-professionals. So either the either person trusts you and you just push this project through, or if not, then you won't push it through. We have the only one uh, person who is a foreigner, and we actually had a very interesting uh, session uh, with him. Uh, we discussed the Moscow River. Alexandros was the chief urban planner for Michael Bloomberg administration and actually for New York it was one of the most progressive administrations. Alexandros, possibly we talk too much about specifics of Russia, about some internal problems, but I do believe that projects are similar. What did you do to build relations with a mayor, with his team, with uh, city dwellers? Let me tell you first that there is no chief architect in New York. That would almost be an impossibility. There is a tradition, of course, of private architects doing government projects, doing every project, competition, new ideas, foreign coming in. It's a volcano of design. I was hired to be the chief urban designer, which is the design eyes of City Hall. The job was created, actually, for me, actually recreated. It existed once before in a previous generation. But Mayor Bloomberg felt that New York had to compete with other global cities on quality. And he thought that good design meant good quality. So my job was to come in, create a staff, and somehow influence everything. I controlled nothing. I had no <laughs> budgets, no trucks, no guns, nothing that <laughs> a government... What can you do without guns? <laughs> what can you do in America? What can you do without guns? <laughs> so I had to influence. And to do this, I, I had to take the, the mayor's goal, luckily called Plan YC, a plan for a greener, greater New York, and create, all, it's not a philosophy, it's just an orientation of how we as a city would grow together in population. We needed to make room for a million more New Yorkers at a time of climate change, rising sea levels that resulted in Hurricane Sandy, and carbon emissions that we agreed to reduce by 30%. How you achieve those three goals became the framework that then I helped visualize. And where it was clearest was in public space. The administration believed that to improve the quality of public life, you improve the quality of public space. And this became our mantra, and it became my tool to get billionaire developers, star architects, neighborhood activists, whoever, lawyers, others who swirl around change in New York to get them to work together. And other departments, too. I had a, I, I grew a division of people who were conversant in sketching. And I insisted on hand sketching, actually. You know now many times we visualize with photorealism? Not good. When you show people, you want to show things that are happening not in the past, but now, that they can become a part of. So you build a momentum and a goal of quality and of growth, and that begins to unite. And I'm not saying it's easy, and I'm not saying there are people who don't go along, but it gives you a path. Now, before I took this job, I was very, very fortunate to have a mentor, a very important mentor named Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan who when I was when I was very young, just out of just out of Harvard graduate school, hired me as a personal architect on the staff of the United States Senate. He was from New York. I was supposedly his advisor, but he was telling me all these things. Our meetings would be at lunch. He'd ask me a question about architecture and then he'd tell me about how when he was a boy a part of New York was built. And I didn't quite realize it at the time, but he was telling me what to do in the future. He was passing on a tool 
for shaping cities. He was getting very old. He died a few years later. But he taught me that nothing in a city happens unless you align politics, finance, and design. And by the way, design is the weakest force. So what he taught me, Bloomberg let me practice. And Bloomberg backed me up. When a billionaire complained that I said, well, the building has to be a little further back because the sidewalk has to be large enough for two strollers, double strollers to pass each other, for people to walk happily, the billionaire would complain to him. He would say, do what they tell you to do. Now, I knew that Bloomberg was unique. The day Bloomberg left office, I left office. Because without that political backing for a design decision, design will be crushed. So for those of us who care about design, we have to be prepared for the window of opportunity to open. And we go in, we put our design to the service of hopefully the whole city, and then quietly when the door shuts, we know. That's the life of an architect. <laughs> Very nice. Volcano of design. Vulcan design. Our cities должны становиться вулканами. Volcanoes of designers. Okay, our cities should become volcanoes erupting with great designs. Wonderful. Thank you. And now I'd like to give the floor to Ilsur for the final word. I'd like to thank moderator, participants. Uh, all the architects, my colleagues. Uh, this issue of um, chief architect is a very important issue. Uh, our life is moving forward and we thought that We'll be in Kazan with Tatiana for five years, but we spent five, ten years working there. And Tatiana, I'd like to thank you one more time for the jo for the work that you've done. So we are going to have the. I think uh, that we are going to have. Um, a competition for a chief architect in Kazan and people from Russia and from abroad uh, are welcome to apply. We are open for new ideas. Kazan is developing rapidly and with the support of Rustan Minikhanov, the president of Tatarstan, we have very serious plans and the role of a chief architect is going to be of paramount importance. Tatiana will be with us, uh, but in a different capacity. So we promise to be become a volcano of architectural ideas in Tatarstan. We have a president of Tatarstan among the audience. We are really lucky. And maybe there is a microphone and you can say a couple of words. Good day. It was a very interesting discussion. We had a session today, and there was a question from a moderator. Uh, what can we advise to a mayor? First of all, I said that my advice is to find a good aide, a chief architect, which will shape the future of the city. It was my advice. And the topic you are discussing today is a very important topic. Tatiana is, I would say, uh, not a convenient person. She is brave and uh, she's ch a challenger. So I do hope we find another person who will be like that. And we need such a person at a city in, in our city. And I'd like to have um, a success in this competition. We want our city to be more beautiful, more convenient, and comfortable. I'd like to think. Mr. Kuznetsov, who did a lot, and I'd like to thank everyone around this table. I was said that some people here are teaching architects. We have a big problem. We need 
well-educated and capable people so that not only capital cities are beautiful, we want to have beautiful towns and villages and for that we need capable architects with good uh, powers. I think that would be great if an architect has a veto power because if something is done it can't be reverted and possibly if uh, there is no such veto power we will regret until the end of our days I'd like to wish success to all of you <laughs> thank you very much and now let's welcome Tatiana and let's give a round of applause to all chief architects uh, for the work that they do and thanks uh, to everyone who participated in the discussion.